A 20th century Austrian economist by the name of Ludwig von Mises once published a lengthy article titled Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth, and in this text he developed a concept which has come to be known as the economic calculation problem. This problem essentially relates to how resources are allocated in an economy. Now, from the perspective of Mises, this concept was useful for advancing his particular ideological position, which was a kind of radical laissez-faire capitalism where rather than state intervention in the economy, you let the free market distribute resources on its own. So no public health care or welfare payments or anything along those lines, uh, but everything to be determined by the private sector. Uh, think of a more extreme version of what neoliberal politicians such as Ronald Reagan or Margaret Thatcher believed in. So this free market capitalist ideal is one answer to the issue of economic calculation. But most countries operate under a kind of corporatist system where there's a strong private sector input into the economy, but also a number of services that are provided by actors linked to the state. Uh, the other main solution to the economic calculation problem is what you might call the Leninist approach, where you basically have the whole process of production and distribution directly administered by the state in a kind of top-down system. Uh, so what I've laid out here is the typical dichotomy between private and public ownership, or to put it another way, the distinction between a free market economy and a planned economy, or, you know, privatization versus nationalization. Uh, this is where we come to a British cyberneticist named Stafford Beer, whose ideal economy could well be considered uh, distinct from the aforementioned dichotomy. Uh, he developed what he called a viable systems model of economic coordination based on the concept of the cybernetic factory. This concept involved modeling informational flows within an organization on the homeostatic nervous system, leading to an allocation of resources coordinated by a kind of decentralized computer network. This viable systems model was the basis of Beer's project CyberSyn. In November of 1970, a politician named Salvador Allende was elected president of Chile. He led what was arguably the world's first democratic socialist government, and accordingly went through with a radical overhaul of Chile's public sector, initiating a process of nationalization of banks and major industry. In 1971, Fernando Flores, the technical general manager of Chile's Production Development Corporation, invited Beer to develop a potential cybernetic reorganization of Chile's public sector. Beer, of course, obliged, and within months was entirely committed to applying a rudimentary viable systems model to the Chilean economy by March of 1972. This project, given the green light by Allende himself, was known as Project Cybernetic Synergy, or CyberSyn. CyberSyn was intended as a decentralized computer system of coordination, which would incorporate feedback from the lower and upper rungs of a management structure reciprocally until an equilibrium of consensus was reached. It would thus form a perfectly democratic decision-making process, consistent with the socialist aim of emancipation of the worker. I go into more detail about the origins of this kind of cybernetic ontology in my previous video, so I'll link that at the end. As this diagram indicates, CyberSyn was ultimately a recursive feedback system to be applied at every level of society, from work at a company. The project never actually moved beyond a limited scale in terms of nationalized enterprises, with only certain companies participating, so I'll instead briefly look at its application in the industrial sector. The prototype of CyberSyn was developed in accordance with the Production Development Corporation's management structure, with Beer outlining a hierarchy of five levels, or systems. The lower levels, the first, second, and third of the structure, governed daily operations, where the fourth and fifth worked on a more abstract and developmental basis. We shan't see the model again, so let's take a quick rehearsal of it. The first system was the level of individual plants within an enterprise which were described as essentially autonomous, save for the homeostatic limits imposed to maintain the broader enterprise's stability. As such, the second and third systems resolved production issues only where necessary, coordinating solutions whilst filtering the most serious issues to the fourth and fifth systems. System four, dealing with the future and the outside. 
And then the task of top management, right up there, System 5, perceived as mainly being about monitoring the homeostat that connects 3 and 4. That's how it was. A complex network of telex machines was successfully established by March of 1972. However, in practical terms, often could not work fast enough to yield adequate results. While computer feedback was intended to be instantaneous, there were instances of companies waiting days and even weeks for delivery. However, Project CyberSign evolved fast throughout Allende's term, with a more complete variation completed by November, with statistical modeling programs known as CyberStride assisting in the coordination of production. Chile's economic situation rapidly deteriorated from 1971, and this was not at all helped by the CIA's consistent undermining of the Allende government through funding of strikes and anti-government actors. Though CyberSyn had reached an advanced operational level by 1973, the project was cut short by the fall of the Allende government. 48 years ago, on the 11th of September 1973, a CIA-backed coup led Allende to commit suicide and installed Augusto Pinochet, a fascistic capitalist dictator, in his place. This coup not only ended Project CyberSyn, but also several decades of democratic governance in Chile. When Beer first explained his concept to Allende, there was a story of how he drew a box for System 5 of his diagram, intending to have it represent the government. When Allende saw it, however, he said, at last, the people, in Spanish. This is a cosy story, however, I think it also betrays a fundamental issue with Project Cybernetic Synergy. While Beer intended to eventually restructure the levels of management to create his, you know, decentralized, hyper-democratic computer system, as things stood, Project CyberSyn only contributed to the structure of Allende's top-down planned economy. This operations room, for instance, was the physical manifestation of System 4 of the project, and was central to coordination of information. But what do you think? Did Stafford Beer develop an alternate solution to the economic calculation problem, or did he just develop a new kind of planned economy? I'd be more than interested to hear your thoughts in the comments section below.